Hey everybody, so uh, this is going to be a continuation of the rock hounding guide series. Um, in this video we're going to be talking about some emergency equipment that you should have with you on in your backpack. So uh, kind of the natural progression for most rock hounds is to get out to more extreme and remote areas. You know, you might start by walking creeks, walking beaches, and you might end up uh, climbing a mountain, looking for an old mine site, things like that. Getting into uh, hard rock mining, you know, where you're going to be bringing chisels, picks, hammers, uh, you name it. Uh, the, the tools that you need to uh, extract cool minerals and rocks from its host material, you know, basalt, whatever. So uh, in doing so, the, you could run, in, run into some risks, you know. So we're going to be talking about a uh, first aid kit that I've put together that is great for me, great for my wife, and uh, covers some of the more likely things that you could experience when you're out doing just that. So, uh, well, first off, please forgive the chainsaw music in the background if you can hear it. Uh, I, I am wandering around a managed area today. So, uh, yeah, they're doing a thinning operation, cutting down some of the trees, and, you know, they're a ways away, but it echoes through the canyon. So let's uh, pull this out and uh, I'll show you what I got. First up is the first aid pouch. So what emergencies am I thinking about when I'm putting this together? Broken bones, fractured, uh, compound fracture, bleeding, uh, uncontrollable bleeding, and some light boo-boos, cuts, things of that nature. And uh, yeah, that's the primary focus of this. This is not something that you can buy in one kit, but you can buy all of the individual components and put them together. So uh, yeah, let's uh, kind of jump right into it. This is going to be a more comprehensive system than what you would typically see, but we like to get out to some very, very remote places, even though, well, where I'm out shooting this right now is not super remote since you can hear the logging operation in the background, but it is it is an important life-saving measure. Um, you know, the, the thing that matters the most is your brain and your knowledge, your ability to assess situations, uh, perform basic first aid, uh, CPR, things like that. There's lots of resources out there, classes, books, videos, all of that. I suggest uh, you build a, a kit that is tailor-made for your needs, and yeah, the, just about that. Okay, so that out of the way, let's look at what's in my first aid kit. First off, this kit right here, uh, it is a military-style pouch, and that is handy because my bag that you see me carrying does have the molly straps on the outside, and if need be, I can strap it to the outside. I recommend you don't do that because having dingle dangles on your pack uh, does not help you in going through thick brush, but uh, it's a possibility. So there's that. Um, this whole kit uh, weighs about a little around two pounds, two and a half pounds, so it's not bad, and it will cost you around 150 bucks. Now, I know that sticker price might be shocking to some of you, but, you know, people blow money on way less useful stuff than this. So right away, I got a pair of gloves on the, the outside uh, so that if somebody has blood on them, things like that, you can just glove up before breaking into your kit. Uh, it's got a dual zipper thing here and you can just pull that open, break right into it. I'm going to uh, try to be gentle in unpacking this so that it doesn't dump on the ground, but in an actual emergency, by all means, just dump dump it out. It does not matter, uh, you know, is what it is. Okay, so right away, we've got some shears. Why do you want shears? If somebody, uh, you know, has an injury to a leg, something like that, you're gonna be cutting some pants off, and well, you need a sharp pair of shears for that. Alcohol pads, um, should go without saying, that alcohol pads are a useful thing to have for cleaning wounds, cl well not wounds, cleaning scrapes, cuts, things of that nature. I don't have many. I got like seven, eight of them here. Um, you can pick these up on Amazon in, in about boxes of them. Carry a little emergency blanket. Tons of uses for these things. My main 
reason for carrying this would be shock. You know, it's very likely that you will not be using this on yourself, but on another person. So having things in place like this for coming across a car accident, somebody had a giant rock fall and hit them on the head, any number of uses, a uh, good thing to have. Really, I got planes, I got chainsaws, got everything here today. Next up, got a little, uh, little kind of boo-boo kit. There's uh, just a couple of different band-aids in there. There's some duct tape on a uh, old gift card and a tick key. So if you live in tick country, this is a really ha handy little tool to have. Um, you know, ticks like to embed themselves and you can put this around them and guide guide their bodies out so you don't break them off inside you. I know it sounds kind of kind of gross. Ticks are kind of gross, but uh, that's a good good little handy thing to have. Not much weight in this setup there. Moving right along uh, on this side, there's just some general gauze here. Um, you know, nothing too special, but if you want to uh, have a mild cut that you want to uh, soak up some blood, this is a good good thing to have. Moving along here, we've got some Steri strips. So if you don't know what a Steri strip is, if you cut yourself in a way that, well, isn't requiring a large bandage, like, you know, here's a screwdriver uh, that I like to carry with me, and it's great for popping rocks out of the ground and things like that. If this goes into you and it's kind of that deep puncture and it, it's bleeding, but it's not a huge wound, this can close it up, kind of like how a, a pair of sutures would, but it's not sutures, doesn't require any skills. Uh, and these are very thin. I believe I have 10 of them here and you can see how thin that is. So this is like a really fancy Band-Aid that can clo close up a wound. All right, so the kind of more big side of this operation, got some medical tape and I keep my medical tape in a Ziploc because, well, uh, you know, we want to keep this clean and you're rock hounding and everything's dirty and you don't want that grime sticking to the side of the tape. I do have a tourniquet. This is a recon tourniquet and it is staged. So there's a lot of great videos about tourniquets and uh, I suggest if you're going to carry one, you should familiarize yourself with the use of a tourniquet so that you know how to properly apply it and carry it around. Uh, excuse me for the sniffles. Um, but yeah, uh, so what I will say about a tourniquet is that if somebody is bleeding out and you're not sure whether or not you should use your tourniquet, use the tourniquet. There's kind of an old uh, wives tale that if you use a tourniquet on someone, it is a guarantee that they will lose the limb. That is not the case. You have hours and hours from the time in which you apply a tourniquet to the point in which they receive medical care that you can save the limb. So it does not mean uh, an amputation. So if somebody has a puncture or cut to their femoral artery and uh, they're bleeding uncontrollably, pull your tourniquet out, put it on that individual. A little pair of forceps here. Uh, you know, there's a ton of uses for, for something like this. If you have a something stuck in you, a big sliver, any number of good uses for that. A little pair of tweezers, you know, pull, pulling slivers out. If you have a, a sliver and you're in the back country, it is obnoxious. So rather than having a trip ruined, I'd rather carry these. Sharpie. Lots of uses for a Sharpie. You do write on your tourniquet the time in which you applied it so that medical professionals later on in the situation will have that. Uh, this is also handy for snake bites. You know, if you, uh, let's say you got bit on the hand, you would circle the puncture because, well, what will happen is you'll start to swell and it can actually kind of disappear. And then you will mark, mark the swelling as it goes up the appendage. So yeah, Sharpie. Whistle, whistle, and uh, some medication. We'll get to that, but yeah, you want to have a whistle. Um, whistles are important if you're with somebody and you're trying to signal for help, or if you're injured. Uh, the amount of yelling that you can do is very limited. <laughs> you know, good, good luck yelling at the top of your lungs for an hour or more. But this, you can blow and uh, get, get that help. So medication. This is a little pill bottle that I picked up on Amazon, and There'll be links down there to it. But I got some aspirin, antihistamine, and ibuprofen. There's almost too many 
um, things that you could use these for to list. But this is a great little pill bottle and you can just kind of each little por portion of it on screws and you can see about the size of it. And uh, they all have that rubber gasket on there, the O-ring, so it's nice and water waterproof. You are going to want any um, medications that you, you use. You're going to want to have some backups. For me, I am allergic to bees. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I know it's unfortunate. I uh, love being outside and I'm allergic to those little little guys. But, uh, yeah, I carry an EpiPen, anaphylactic shock. You know, but if you have heart medicine or whatever medicine that you take, you're going to want to have some backup in here. Also, I have a Ziploc here with a, I believe that's three more pairs of gloves just rolled up and tucked in there. And then onto the big thing, got a battle dressing. It's an Israeli uh, compression bandage. It's got a little thing right there that you can see and you can wind it around. This is great for head wounds, any type of uh, large trauma that you could experience. This is a good dressing for that because um, you can wind it and I'll have it apply the pressure for you as opposed to uh, you having to put your hand on, on that. Coming up to the end here. <clears throat> so I have a chest seal. Chest seals are important if you are going to be in the backcountry. Um, this is essentially for a through wound, so a, a, a gunshot. You know, often in the Western United States, there's hunting and, uh, well, you end up rock hounding where people hunt. So people do get accidentally shot. So if you're going to carry a gun, be around guns, and you don't have one of these, well, you should probably pick one up. All right. So that is the first aid kit there. Next up, one last thing, this right here. This is a combat splint. So these are uh, made by Recon. I keep it folded up and in my uh, the back of my bag. But essentially, this is like this piece of foam with this like adjustable metal thing. I believe it's metal in here. And, uh, um, you know, you can splint a neck, wrist. It shows all the different ways in which you apply this. I also have a little... Well, I guess there's one more thing. <laughs> I have a... This is a... Oh, God, what do you call it? It's this like self-adhesive wrap uh and that is what you would secure this with so that is something that is always in my pack on these outings and uh it covers most of the things that you would possibly experience like i said you know bleeding bugs light a medical emergency uh breaks sprains fractures that type of stuff so uh if you found this to be useful um i hope you put together a set a kit similar to this for yourself and get out rock hounding and have a have a good time and be safe doing it and if you like this type of content i would appreciate a subscription a comment a like all that good stuff you know so uh yeah as always have a good day man